Hi there. Have you ever heard the phrase, the eyes are the window to the soul? Or sometimes the door, the doors to the soul? That's because you can tell a lot about a person by watching where they look. That's called overt attention. When your eyes and where they're directed, tell other people what's important to you. So how does overt attention work? Well, we need to go through some basic ideas about eye movements. When you look at something for an extended period of time, we call that a fixation, right? It's when your eyes pause on a point of particular interest. There's also a concept of saccades or saccades. A saccade is a rapid eye movement. It's a ballistic eye movement. So when you're looking at a painting or looking out the window, your eyes jump from thing to thing to thing. Um, and when you land, that gives your visual system time to take in and process information that is available. So I've got uh, some pictures here from Alfred Yarbus. And on the left is a picture of a woman. And on the right is sort of a dimmed version of the picture of the woman with squiggly lines all over it. The um, those circular points on that picture tell you where someone fixated, where their eyes stopped and rested a moment uh, when they were looking at that picture. The lines tell you, they give you an idea of the direction of the saccades or the rapid eye movements. Now, why do we have to move our eyes to move our attention? Well, we don't, but there is a very tight coupling between visual attention and eye movements. And the reason for that it goes back to the, to the structure of our retina. We have a fovea that has a lot of photoreceptors that are very sensitive to detail. And in order to get the fovea on a point of interest, you have to move your eyes, right? So if something's important to me, I'll move my eyes until that thing falls on my fovea so I can take a really crisp and clear picture of it for analysis. That's the basic ideas behind overt attention, obvious attention. What Yarbus and others have shown is that what we pay attention to or where we direct our attention depends a lot on knowledge. So in uh, some of the studies that have been done on overt attention, they give people pictures of various scenes um, this is a study where they gave people pictures of a black and white old fashioned indoor family scene. And they asked people different questions about the scene and uh, measured the saccades and the fixations while the person was looking at the picture to extract the information that was needed to answer the question that had been asked. Um, and you can see so each of the sets of, uh, what is that, seven squiggle lines there, each of those is an indication of how someone overtly shifted their eyes as they shifted their attention around the scene to answer different questions. So this tells us that the ways in which we move our eyes and the ways in which we allocate our attention reflect our goals, right? That's an important aspect to eyes being the window to the soul. Now, so we have a lot of that top-down processing. There's also some bottom-up uh, cues. There are some things that are designed that, so that we can't not pay attention to them. So for example, a fire truck or an EMT ambulance, what do they have? They have sounds that are um, changing their ballistic. It's not a constant uh, or eh, right? It's ballistic changing. Wop, 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 wop. I think that sounded like a chicken, but whatever. Uh, so lights are flashing and sounds are changing. Change like that um, is something that grabs our attention. It's a very salient stimulus. Um, Color is another thing that can jump out. It can grab our attention. So sometimes you've heard the phrase of black sheep in the family. Um, so maybe there's a bunch of white sheep. And if you're me in the family, you're the one black sheep and you, you stand out from everyone else. Um, babies faces, wow, that grabs our attention right away. Some people think that 
faces of babies and have evolved in a way so that it grabs our attention. Uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I drive to work, I drive by stores that have these darned blow up uh, sleeves that are shaped like people and they're moving in these awkward ways. I can't not look. So um, there are aspects of stimuli uh, that grab our attention. So everything, it's not entirely um, top down. There's also something called an orienting reflex. So you and I could be having a conversation and if someone screams in the background really loudly, you can't help but direct your attention. When I give this demonstrate, when I give this lecture in a classroom, what I usually do is plant someone in the back of the lecture so that when they see this slide, they scream or they throw books. And what happens? The lecture hall goes completely silent and 200 faces look up to the person who's just screamed. That's an orienting reflex. Um, it's reflexive. It's not something that's easy to control. It's found in all sentient beings. That is, um, all beings that um, have awareness and feelings. Uh, now, what happens when there's an orienting reflex like that? Uh, it is associated with, when, when we orient um, automatically like that, it's associated with our sympathetic nervous system getting uh, uh, really turned on. So our heart rate beats like crazy, our breathing increases, we get in this sort of fight or flight mode. So an oriented reflex, an orienting reflex is when you're paying attention to one thing and something startling happens and your attention is just completely taken over by it. Now let's go back to your eyes are a window into your soul. Where you are looking tells other people a lot about what is important to you, right? You move your eyes around so that the things that are important to you, the image of those things falls on your fovea, the part of your retina that has a really dense or high number of photoreceptors. So you've got a little detail. Um, so here are uh, some various funny pictures that give you a sense of what the person doing the looking uh, finds to be really meaningful and relevant to them. So that's one example, this attentional capture is one example of how your eyes uh, give you away. But we know that too, right? Uh, so what do we do? Sometimes we move our attention without moving our eyes. So normally, when attention moves, the eyes go with it. That's sort of the default. But it is possible when you want to be sneaky to move your attention without moving your eyes. And that is called covert attention. It's like covert operations. It's like sneaky spy undercover attention. So covert attention. Can you move <laughs> your attention without moving your eyes? Absolutely can. So maybe, for example, you're trying to pay attention to the lecture in front of you, but somebody really interesting has just sat down next to you and you're really curious about what they're doing, but you don't want to just stare at them. So what do you do? You put on a face like you're paying attention to the lecture, but your attention is all going over to the sides. Um, there's been a number of studies that use a spatial cueing paradigm that I'm, I'm not going to go into here. Um, where if you have people look in one place, but move their attention to a different place. So you're looking at me, but I tell you, yeah, look at my nose, but pay attention to this over here. Well, that's a shadow there. Pay attention to this up here, right? So look here, but pay attention to this up here. You can absolutely do it. You can absolutely do it because we are social animals. We pay a lot of attention to where other people are looking. And if we see a lot of people looking in a particular direction, what happens? You stop and look in that direction too. Uh, this is a, uh, on the bottom left is a picture from, I think it's from one of those brain game TV shows where they had a number of people standing out in the sidewalk and they're all looking up and pointing to the same place in the sky where there is absolutely nothing. 
and the and the the gag or the demonstration is to see what happens. What will other people do? Well, other people stop and look up at that same place. Why? Because we pay a lot of attention to where other people are looking. Uh, children develop this ability within the first year of light, light, life, within the first 12 months of life. Uh, and with children, we call it joint attention. It's the point where, for example, I don't have a toy right now, but if I were playing with a little kid and wanted to teach the child that this is, the word for this is a cup, uh, what I might do is say, look, Johnny, here's a cup. And by the time Johnny gets to be about 12, Johnny will understand that if I'm looking at something and talking about it, and he's looking at something and talking about it, we both understand that we're talking about the same thing, joint attention. Okay, that ends today's series of lectures on attention. Come back and we're going to talk, spend a long time talking about why is it so darn dangerous to talk or text on your cell phone while you're driving. Okay. See you next lecture.